Well, uh, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, teachers of the world. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to be with you all. Um, but first, I would like to say a bit uh, thank you to Manuela Sand and uh, Teacher Development Webinars for the invitation. Uh, the topic today is the magic of drama in language learning. But uh, before starting, it is important to consider that uh, we are undergoing a process of transformation in education uh, because um, the, the system we are having at the moment is anachronic and does not respond to uh, 21st century requirements. New tendencies in education have emerged and um, uh, uh, they, they have been implemented in schools in different parts of the world with great success. Uh, this new pedagogy um, uh, has a holistic uh, student-centered approach and um, it is concerned with active methodologies. These active methodologies uh, place the students in the center of the process of learning, giving him an active role. This means that they become active participants um, rather than being passive receivers of information. Um, uh, new procedures are implemented today, uh, which focus on how students learn rather than what they learn. And it is precisely in this type of education that drama plays a crucial role. Why? Because um, it also places the student in the center of the process of learning, <clears throat> giving him a dynamic role. Um, drama is a very valuable tool because uh, it engages active, constructive, a reflective learning. And also uh, it allows students develop communicative and interactional um, skills. This means that drama is the only alternative method that helps students develop their communication skills. Let me share my screen now. Uh, Amanulat, can I share my screen? The screen? Sure, you can. All right. All right, here we are. Well, um, well, I, I, I was saying that. Um, a drama is the, and I insist on this, a drama is um, the only alternative method that helps the students develop communication skills. Uh, it is important to stress the fact that uh, drama um, acts as a consolidator, as um, a, a reinforcement uh, method, because it helps students um, assess the language they know. Um, well, the question now is, what is drama? This uh, Chinese proverb clearly expresses what it means. I hear and I forget, I see and I remember, I do and I understand. This means that drama is learning by doing. Drama is action, drama is movement, drama is being. Um, when we use drama in the classroom, learning becomes fun, motivating and inspirational. That's why the students uh, get motivated easily and they enjoy the classes. Why? Because drama creates uh, a special atmosphere um, which is unthreatening, unstressful, healthy, safe, which invites the students to learn. Isn't it great? Well, um, when drama is present, 
all the students are alert because they are eager to start um, doing any activity. Why? Because they are, they are directly involved. This means that they are not passive receivers of information. That is to say, um, they become active participants in their learning journey. Um, well, what else can we say about drama? It is very important because um, it helps the development of the five C's. Let's say the five competencies which are required in 21st century education. Communication. Well, I have already said that it helps the development of communication skills. That is to say, it is concerned with developing the skills of speaking and listening, but it also helps the students speak and listen correctly. Hmm? This means that the students need to know how to take part in a conversation. Um, for example, ten, ten taking floor, um, the use of conversation devices so as to keep the conversation going. Then cooperation, why? Because most of the activities are concerned with working together. Um, then control of emotions. Well, you know that um, drama is therapeutic. This means that the students feel comfortable when they are doing a drama activity. But it is not only a question of controlling your emotions, it is also how to use them. Mm? Emotions are always part of our daily lives. Mm? We, are, we are emotional people. The thing is that uh, emotions are not treated in the way drama does in the classroom. So the students um, uh, become familiar with emotions and they not only can control them, but they know exactly how to use them effectively to convey meaning when they are speaking. For this reason, drama is also very important and a valuable tool in education. Now, why drama is essential in today's classrooms? Well, first of, first of all, it is brain friendly. This means that it focuses on the abilities of the brain. We know that um, uh, a net neuroscience has given us important information about how the, the brain works. Uh, this means that today uh, we can optimize the process of learning, taking into consideration the potential of the brain. Drama considers that each student is unique and he has personal characteristics which defines him as a person. And um, he also, it also recognizes that each student brings his own talents to the classroom. So it is our responsibilities as teachers to discover those talents hmm, so that they will, the, the students will be able to use them um, in their process of learning. Um, we all know that um, uh, one, fit, um, one size fits all method is ineffective. We haven't got homogeneous classes and um, often we are still considering our classes homogeneous and we think that all students can learn in the same way. Well, when we start using drama, we realize that um, this is not true. Hmm? We need to pay attention to um, uh, each individual hmm, because they bring their their own potential, their own talents, and this is very important. Uh, that's why when we use drama, classes are full of magic because each student is contributing uh, to, uh, to the class because they bring their own ideas, their own abilities, their own skills. That's why uh, this magic is always present in a drama class. Well, um, it has a holistic approach. This means that um, it considers the person as a whole with his mind, body, and emotions. Um, a drama uh, articulates thinking, doing, and feeling. This means that it brings together body, mind, and emotions. 
This means that when we are learning, uh, we are not just using our heads, we are using our bodies and we are using our emotions. Remember that emotions are present in our daily lives, but we tend to forget that emotions are also present in the process of learning. Mm? And this should be taken into account because students enjoy feeling those emotions present. And this is related to motivation. Well, um, um, it helps the development of multiple intelligences. Howard uh, Gardner uh, has redefined intelligence as a set of um, abilities and capabilities that can be developed. He has distinguished eight, and each individual has these eight um, intelligences. What is different the, uh, uh, is the way they are combined. Eh? Each combination is unique. Um, so when students come to class, we need to pay attention to these intelligences. These are the, 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 the potential uh, I was talking about just a few minutes ago. Uh, for this reason, it is very important when we start uh, um, with a new, we, we start working with a new group of students to get to know them. We need to know the type of students we are having in the classroom. Mm? So we need to devote mm, the first, um, first week or more if necessary eh, to ask questions uh, to our students Mm, uh, about their personalities, their hobbies, uh, their social and familiar background to have uh, parent conferences, because in this way we will have an idea of the type of students we are having in the classroom. Remember that each student is unique and he has personal characteristics which define the group they belong to. Mm? That's why when we are working with different groups, we immediately realize that we cannot give them the same strategies or the same type of activities because they are different. And sometimes when we tend to give, uh, to give them uh, the same activities, uh, we, we really detect that uh, in group one, they were, they were better than um, in group B. Why? Because we have used a particular strategy or a particular activity without taking into consideration um, the type of students we are having. We normally concentrate on content and we forget about the potential that is present in each class. <clears throat> well, um, that's why considering multiple intelligences is very important. Well, it helps the development of emotional intelligence. Um, why? Aristotle once said, educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. This means that cognition and um, education, uh, sorry, cognition and, and emotions form a binomial and they are inseparable. Mm? And we should remember that students do not learn when we want to teach them. They learn when they are emotionally prepared. Mm? That's why we need to create a pleasant atmosphere uh, uh, which, um, in which the students feel confident and uh, they think that they can participate um, more, comf more, more comfortably. Um, uh, when, the, when students uh, realize that uh, emotions are present in the process of learning, they work differently. Mm? So the emotions are always floating in the air eh? and this helps students get intrinsically motivated. Um, well, uh, drama has a multi-sensory approach. This means that all the senses are present and um, the students learn better because um, they have different ways of learning. Uh, Multisensory programs uh, usually include visual, auditory, tactile, and kinesthetic activities. So you see there is a variety uh, of activities that we can use in order to activate um, their senses. And when this type of multisensory learning um, is present, 
the students feel more comfortable because they know that they can learn in different ways. Isn't it amazing? Well, uh, drama takes into consideration uh, different learning styles. We know that students learn differently, just as teachers teach differently. Huh? So uh, there are different ways of teaching and there are different ways of learning. We also know that students have different paces. So styles and paces should be taken into account uh, when we are working with a group of students. Because remember, one size fits all method does not exist. Hmm? Um, and for this reason, also, it is important to know our students at the beginning of the year so as to know what type of strategies uh, and um, the way um, I have to teach my students, hmm, taking into consideration this valuable information. Um, well, um, when we consider styles hmm, and paces, we should concentrate on the factors that may affect them. They are psychological, cognitive, and affective. Um, well, inclusive learning, this is very important. Uh, drama values diversity and recognizes um, the needs of the students. Uh, drama as an educational tool is a good equalizer. Well, all the arts are great equalizers. This means that uh, regardless of ability or disability, uh, drama is accessible to all types of students. So the students feel more comfortable because they feel that everybody independent of these uh, disabilities or abilities, they can work together and they share the same aims. And especially those students who uh, have some um, sort of disability, they know that uh, they can work normally and enjoy the class with the whole class with the with all the, the members of the class and this is very important this means that they are not relegated they are really part of the class and they are actively involved in the process of learning well it fosters cooperative work cooperative work is not an activity that is usually present in the classroom mm -hmm. Uh, especially uh, in, in the traditional model uh, we have been using for ages uh, and now active methodologies are replacing that anachronic model. Why? Because normally teachers think that this type of work may cause a lot of disruption, but when students are given the right instructions and they become used to working like that, it works like magic. Um, drama can be compared to the mechanism of a clock. And this is very important. Um, whenever we are engaged in a drama activity, each student is important. Hmm? And everybody is responsible for the work they are doing. If one fails, the whole group fails. So the, the same happens uh, um, in a clock. When a piece is broken, the clock won't work. Um, working cooperatively is very important because it is the first step in becoming autonomous. And remember that one of the most important missions uh, is to help our students become independent. Now, when students work together, they feel that they, they are learning together because they are sharing information, they are sharing strategies. And um, in this way, they feel confident because they help one another. We should remember that learning is a social process. This means that we need to learn with others. We cannot learn individually. Hmm? Um, individual learning is promoted by the traditional model. Hmm? And uh, we need to learn together in order to be able to start learning 
individually. That's the way. Um, I always say that uh, a silent class is not healthy. We need noise, but there are two types of noise. The bad noise that is usually present when the students are bored because they are not interested in what the teacher is saying, so they misbehave. But there is another type of noise that is productive. This occurs when the students are busy working in a, a, a specific uh, activity the teacher has given them has given them. This means that they are thinking, they are exchanging ideas, they are they are creating. Mm? So this is the type of noise that should be present in the classroom because it is productive. This means that the students are thinking laterally and critically. Well, um, it fosters creativity. Eh? Creativity and drama, both of them, also form a binomial and they are inseparable. Uh, creativity is a unique quality of human beings. And um, uh, when we um, encourage our students to be creative, they are able to connect uh, different ideas more easily so that they develop their lateral thinking. Um, when uh, creativity is floating in the air, Mm, it's so great because the students are eager to participate. You know that today it's difficult to, um, to engage our students in our classes. Well, when creativity is present, um, this is a very, a very powerful tool because um, uh, they know that being creative can take them outside their comfort zone mm, so that they take risks. Mm? They can do different things. And what is important, they are not restricted to uh, a particular activity in which they have instructions. Huh? We can give them um, just a simple instruction and let them do, let them be. Huh? What, and uh, we are really um, uh, great observants of their work. Well, drama is meaningful because it occurs in contextualized settings. Um, it brings uh, the real world into the classroom and the students are able to connect what they learn with what they live. Mm? This means that drama um, focuses on authentic learning. Well, it helps the development of communication skills. And this is very important because communication skills are not even taught in the mother tongue. They are taken for granted together with the rest. And the students, for example, when they have to describe something in any subject, they have uh, meaningly expletives, they are called. When they say, well, uh, mm, well, I don't know. When they speak like that, well, they are not sure about what they are saying, so they need to make these sort of pauses in order to organize their ideas. So uh, they need confidence. They, they need um, conversation devices so as to avoid breakdowns in communication. It is very difficult to follow a person who is constantly saying, you know, well, I want to say uh, something like that. Well, drama gives, gives, the, gives the students the opportunity to improve their communication skills. In the case of um, a, a language class, the students develop phonological awareness. This means that they are able to interpret um, the sounds, the sequence of sounds that uh, are present in speech. But they also uh, develop prosodic recognition. That is to say, they learn and they pay attention to stress and intonation because they are meaningful. Mm? And they also interpret the body language that accompanies words. This information is usually not taken into account. It is ignored. And it is very, very important, especially today because English has become an international language. This means that there are more non-native speakers than native speakers. And this has given rise to a variety of accents. So students need lots of exposure mm, because they need to sharpen their ears. Mm. And today they have to understand 
speakers of the world who use English, whose mother tongue is not English. So this complicates the situations. Normally, the students have been prepared to listen to English speakers. Well, today they need to uh, understand uh, English around the world. And when the students are given the opportunity to concentrate on what is not said, but is expressed through tone of voice, uh, intonation and body language, understanding becomes important. They are able to understand better. Um, and I'm going to give you an example how the same utterance can have different meanings according to um, a, a different intonation and body language. Suppose that uh, you ask me, um, any news about the boss? And I say, he didn't call me. So you see, I'm happy because no call till now. So the same, the same question and the, the same answer. But in this case, I say, oh, he didn't call me. I'm angry right? because I was expecting this call. Hmm? and he has ignored me, I'm angry. And the same question again, and I say, <laughs> he didn't phone me. So I'm sad hmm? because probably this means that I have been fired. So the same utterance, the same lexical meaning, hmm? but hmm? Uh, the interpretation is different because I have used different paralinguistic uh, cues. So you see how important this um, nonverbal communication is. Well, um, drama is also a flexible technique. Why? Because it can fit into any subject. And for example, when we use a project based learning, drama can be used um, to articulate all the subjects. And in this way, the students have a more integrated. Uh, way of learning. Um, well, it promotes metacognition. Metacognition uh, is not as present as it should be in the classroom. Why? Because uh, when students are taught um, uh, metacognitive strategies, they are able to reflect on their own learning. Mm? And usually students are not allowed uh, to reflect on the way they are learning. This means that when they use these metacognitive strategies, they are um, identifying um, their weaknesses and their strengths. And in this way, they improve their, um, their learning. Of course, that when they are using metacognition, they need feedback. Eh? Feedback is, should always be present in the classroom so that Metacognition and feedback, again, this is a new eh, um, um, uh, binomial. Eh? They cannot be separated. And students need and ask for feedback. For example, uh, children normally come to you and say, Miss, am I a good student? Am I learning well? Oh my God. This means that my feedback is not enough. And I say, oh, my darling, of course, you are an excellent student. Keep on like that. For adolescents or students at college <laughs> won't act like this, but probably they will say, uh, well, I would like to know uh, if I'm prepared uh, for the following examination or to sit for uh, the final exam. They need feedback because uh, feedback uh, tells the students where they are, where they need to go and how to get there. Mm? So feedback should also be present in the classroom. Why? Because when metacognition uh, is present and feedback is floating in the air, they develop their critical thinking. And when they are able to express their ideas, their thoughts, they make decisions, they become agents in their own learning. This means that they can regulate their own learning. Isn't it amazing? Well, what are the roles of the teacher? The teacher who uses drama techniques takes a background role. She's no longer an instructor. Remember that 
uh, drama is concerned with uh, material already learned. So it, she becomes, uh, or he becomes um, a facilitator, a monitor. This means that while the students are doing the activities, she moves around the class uh, uh, observing what the students are, are doing. So formative assessment um, is taking place. Remember that every single class is a source of information. Mm? There is no need to have a test at the end of a unit because uh, every class can give you information about the way the students are working, the way the students are learning and the way they are responding. Uh, makes language learning more accessible to learners. Why? First of all, because she encourages cooperative work. So uh, the students um, feel more comfortable because they know that learning is a social process. And also because uh, he gives the uh, students the opportunity to reflect on their own learning because uh, he teaches them metacognitive strategies. She enlivens the class with creative ideas. Um, Einstein once said, um, uh, if, you don't, if you don't want the same results, act differently, do something different. This means that um, uh, her, the classes, uh, a drama teacher or a, a teacher who uses drama, uh, her classes are not predictable. Mm? This means that uh, every class is full of creativity. Uh, Einstein also said, um, imagination is more important than knowledge. Mm? So when creativity is present in the classroom, the students uh, get engaged easily. They become intrinsically motivated. Mm? Um, well, <clears throat> Uh, he triggers learners' curiosity. We should remember that attention is the first step in, um, in learning. Hmm? First, I need to gain their attention, right? Once they are paying attention, they get motivated. Motivation opens the door to curiosity. And when the students are curious, they start asking questions. And questions are... Um, sources of information. Remember that students learn by asking questions, not by answering them. Mm? <clears throat> um, he gives learners voice and choice. Mm? When uh, he gives uh, students voice and choice, mm, he's empowering them. Mm? Uh, this means that students are involved in, um, in um, normal issues. And students feel that they are heard and that their interests <clears throat> are taken into consideration. So a sense of belonging is created. Um, it gives, um, it, uh, he, uh, he enhances failure and emphasizes practice. Mistakes are, are important. Huh? They should not be uh, punished. They are, they are part of the process. They are, uh, pieces of information that help students improve their learning. That's why the classroom should become a laboratory where the students experiment with language. There is a lot of trial and error, mm? and uh, they um, uh, they know that mistakes are expected. And we cannot learn something without committing mistakes. Committed mistakes is something natural. Okay, um, he fosters a growth mindset. A student with a growth mindset knows that through hard work, he will be able to improve his process of learning. Mm -hmm. And he also prevents bulimic learning. Bulimic learning occurs when students are forced to memorize um, contents um, without focusing on long-term retention or on the skills that are required for deep learning. In other words, the teacher explains, the students studies, study, and then they repeat like a parrot hmm, what the teacher said some days ago. This means that this uh, type of learning is superficial. Hmm? 
and the information will be forgotten in a few days. So this is not the way students should learn. What the students learn is meaningful, relevant uh, learning. And drama is concerned with this type of learning because when the students are engaged in a drama activity, what they do is memorable. What they do is really meaningful. And uh, they feel that they can learn in this way because it's as if they were playing. And remember that playing is the natural way of learning. Well, what is or uh, what are the roles of the student? Students engaged in a drama activity discover their creative selves. This is very important because when they discover that they can be creative, they can connect ideas, different ideas easily, hmm? um, they feel amazed. Hmm? Um, when they are using creativity, they unleash their imagination. Why? Because they are using their lateral thinking. Mm? They, uh, they are original uh, in, in their answers. They are not following the conventional way. Mm? They surprise the teacher and their own peers. Um, they sharpen their senses because they use multisensory learning and they feel really very comfortable when they have different ways of learning. Uh, they shape and respond to challenges. Why? Because they, they become can-do learners. Mm? They are proactive. They, uh, they step outside the comfort zone. They, um, they take initiative. They are inquisitive. Um, they are fond of learning. This means that they become lifelong learners. Oh, this is so great when you have a class like that. Um, they experiment with language. Why? Because they are part of this laboratory eh, in which they are constantly experimenting with language. And this is a way of reflecting on their own learning because they can assess eh, uh, their, the, the language they use. They make errors work because they know that mistakes are part of the process. They realize that mistakes are deductive. Why? Because they teach them and they are constructive because they help them construct their own, their own knowledge. That's why they are welcome. Hmm? And they, um, they don't care if they commit mistakes because uh, they know that teachers won't make a fuss. Uh, they work cooperatively. Well, when they work cooperatively, they know that they are sharing strategies, information, hmm? uh, their own learning, so that they are enriched uh, when they are together. That's why they enjoy working together. And besides, remember that working cooperatively means that um, they are responsible for what they are, doing, what, what they are doing. So they are really concentrated uh, on the activity because they are having fun. Hmm? And while they are having fun, they are learning. And they become active agents of their learning. Why? Because they become metacognitive learners. This means that they can assess their own learning so that they can regulate it. When they become <clears throat> managers of their own learning, I think that our mission has been accomplished. Why? Because they have become independent. Isn't it great? Well, now we get to the active practice. It is the best part of the lesson because it is when the students are really involved uh, in the class and uh, they take an active participation. Well, drama proposes um, some warm ups hmm, before starting the class. They are really very useful because uh, they um, uh, prepare the students physically and mentally. Hmm? Uh, they create a balance between body and mind. Remember that uh, drama is holistic. Eh? This means that emotions, uh, our minds and our bodies are working uh, when we are using drama. Um, these uh, warm-ups um, uh, make the students feel relaxed and ready for the process of learning. There are different types of activities that we can do before starting the class. Uh, you, this usually take um, five, eight, no more than that. Hmm? 
and the students really enjoy at all ages. Mm? Um, it can be breathing in order to send oxygen to the brain mm? or uh, physical stretching. For example, early in the morning, I allow my students to stretch. So I say, okay, try to touch the ceiling. Come on, stretch your hands, come on. You can yawn. You can yawn and uh, they, they, they feel really happy because the whole pad lets us yawn in the classroom, right? But indirectly, they are being prepared for the process of learning. Okay, then uh, vocal workout is uh, also very useful because mm, we prepare the articulators. There are different activities that may be used in order to warm um, the muscles of the mouth so that the students will be able to speak more easily, will be able to articulate sounds more comfortably. Um, brain gym, also very important. Why? Because um, it uh, keeps the brain alert. Mm? It, um, the, the left and the right uh, hemispheres are connected. Mm? And there are different activities that can be used. Um, uh, students at all levels enjoy this type of activity um, because they are really challenging. Mm? When you become accustomed to doing them, uh, um, this means that um, you can do them very easily. Mm? But at the beginning, it will take time. Well, and uh, a brain break is something that um, is not so usual in the classroom. And they are very important because they are normally used when um, students, after having uh, worked for, let's say, 30 minutes, uh, you suddenly stop the class and say, okay, stop working. Now uh, let's start dancing or singing or doing some physical exercises for some minutes so that the students will um, clear their minds. Mm? They will uh, recharge their energies. And after this dancing or singing or doing uh, any other activity, um, we'll prepare them to finish the, the, the activity they were doing. Mm? They are great. Mm? And uh, the students uh, love when they are uh, having this type of breaks because you know that when we are uh, planning our lessons, we get tired and what do we do? Eh? We stop our work and probably we have a coffee or we start talking with members of the family or we go to the garden and watch the plants, whatever. So we need this sort of brain breaks. Okay, um, the type of activities that are usually present um, in drama, well, they are verbal and nonverbal. Hmm? Verbal, discussions. discussions. Discussions are present in the classroom, hmm? um, uh, even if the teacher is not fond of drama. But the thing is that the students need to know how to conduct these uh, discussions taking into consideration the communication skills that are provided by drama, right? Th that is to say, um, the communicative and interactional competence uh, that is developed when we deal with drama. Um, role play and simulation, two important activities, but that should be present in the classroom. Remember that when we use drama, we are using the language permanently because most of the activities are concerned with interactions, face-to-face -face, um, conversations. Um, the difference between a role play and a simulation is that a role play, in a role play, the students are themselves. Hmm? Um, for example, um, uh, the teacher gives them uh, a context of situation. You are um, at the airport and uh, you want to check in. So you will have a conversation with the assistant. So they are themselves. And they do not need any, any script. They do not need any costumes. In a simulation, the students take on different roles. They may be a king, a monster, a frog, a piece of furniture whatever you can imagine. And uh, in this case, they need a, a script and they can enhance the performance by using props and costumes. Uh, brainstorming, well, brainstorming is very important because it is a creative process of rethinking and the students give 
uh, different uh, express their opinions mm, um, in order to solve a problem. Group story. This is very nice because uh, the students get in groups and um, each student adds something to, uh, to the story. For example, I start once upon a time, there was a king who was a frog. And then the, the other person goes on. Well, he was not very satisfied because he didn't want to be a king. And then the third person follows and uh, describing uh, and telling something about the story. A mini play. Uh, this can be done at any level. Huh? This depends on um, the, the amount of knowledge the students have <clears throat> of the language. Um, they prepare a script and then they, they of course, that the teacher may guide them, the scripts are corrected, and then they um, perform it uh, to the rest of the class. Improvisations are used for higher levels. Why? Because there is no preparation and the teacher gives um, the, um, the instruction and the students start speaking directly. Well, improvisations are very important because as students know that and mistakes are welcome. Mm? Uh, if there are mistakes, they are treated in the class. Remember that mistakes mm, are usually common. Uh, many students share the same types of mistakes. So it is important to devote time to dealing with mistakes in the classroom. Mm? Sometimes if necessary, we can devote a whole class because if they are not treated, the students start the, starts, uh, having gaps. Mm? And um, remember that, Mastery learning is important. We cannot go on teaching if the students um, have not understood a content we have just finished. And this should be controlled by the teacher. As regards non-verbal activities, um, well, the students are not familiar with emotions. Hmm? Normally, the, the activities that are usually present in the classroom, especially with children, are the identification of emotions through pictures. But here we need um, active participation of the students. So one of the first activities that we can do is uh, to ask the students to prepare a gesture list. In this case, the students should pay attention to the everyday expressions we use in our lives. They never pay attention to that. Now they need to, to become familiar with them because they will become part of their activities um, so that they will have a good command of these gestures. For example, it may be a wink, it may be a smile, it may be um, your finger hmm, on your lips, and then the students will have to give the meaning of these uh, gestures. Uh, another activity is opposite emotions. In, in, this is more difficult because the students have to express um, an idea, but using an emotion that is not closely connected with it. For example, <laughs> my bag was stolen. <laughs> Imagine I wouldn't say something like that. Eh? I need to express my sadness because it has been stolen. Well, the students have lots of fun when this activity is done in the classroom. Well, body talk or silent scene. This means that the students perform um, a short uh, scene with the words. And then their peers had to express through words what they have seen. Um, after, for um, a follow up activity, uh, the students can prepare the same scene, but now with body language and words. Charades are very important because it is a game of pantomimes. Mm? Um, it is uh, an acting game for all ages. Everybody enjoys this type of activity. In this case, the students act, act out a phrase. It may be the name of a book, the, the, the name of a, uh, of, of a film, mm? uh, of course, with our words. You don't say. In this case, you ask your students to prepare a list of nonverbal behaviors, and then they have to use them in a particular situation. Um, 
movement story is for children. Hmm? In this case, the teacher may read to them a story that is familiar to them. So this is an instruction. Okay, I'm going to read this story to you. And whenever I highlight a word, you will use your body language to express that word I have mentioned. For example, I may say, once upon a time, there was a big elephant. The elephant was very sad. Suddenly, a bird appeared. So you see, in this type of activity, um, you are checking comprehension and the use of vocabulary through body language. And another activity is action song. Action song is a TPR activity, eh? total physical response. Totally, phys uh, total physical response activity are very important because the students respond physically to uh, language uh, input. Um, it can be used at any level and it does not require any special preparation. And all the students enjoy this type of activity because they learn by, by, by having fun. And uh, it is especially useful <clears throat> for checking vocabulary. And uh, finally, we get to the right conditions. What are the right conditions for this type of activities? Mind you, I have mentioned that some, there are hundreds of activities. Uh, if you search the net, you will find that um, uh, there are lots and lots, and you won't be able to choose uh, one because it's difficult to make a decision in this case. Well, what are the right conditions? First of all, we need a special physical environment. This means that there are two types of activities, those which require um, uh, sitting and those which require space. Those um, activities in which the students remain seated um, we have three different types of seating arrangements. Uh, we may have a horseshoe, um, a circle, or the students may be seated in groups. Normally, remember that normally rows are not productive because we cannot have real face-to-face -face conversation. Normally, we prefer a horseshoe seating arrangement because um, everybody can see one another mm, and we can uh, have interactions more comfortably. Relationships are also very important. Why? Because um, the students are working together all the time. So the teacher should encourage the development of social skills. Uh, and the teacher should also encourage students to give positive uh, comments and constructive feedback to their peers, uh, to the, the, the work of their peers. Um, well, a cooperative climate is created in the classroom. And the students know that when they are working creatively, they are responsible uh, for the work they are doing. This means that there is individual and collective responsibility. Um, goal orientation. Well, they know that when they are giving a drama, they are giving a, a drama activity, um, they are working towards a specific goal within a time limit. This um, helps them concentrate better and organize. Uh, the activity faster. And feedback, of course, should be present. Feedback uh, is an element that, uh, independent of uh, using drama, is the uh, component of, of every class. Why? Because through feedback, the students can make comments on their own progress. And we should remember that feedback um, should be multidirectional. Mm? It should be teacher to students, students to students and students to self. This means that self-feedback is very important. And this is part of student agency. When students become agents of their own learning, um, they, uh, they, they use self-feedback. This means that they are able to, e to evaluate their own process of learning. Isn't it great, really? Huh? That's why they, uh, they, they can manage their learning perfectly well. Well, um, I think that now 
I have finished my presentation and it's time for questions and answers. So uh, I hope that you have enjoyed my presentation and now I'm all ears. I would like to listen to you now. I will stop uh, sharing my uh, presentation. All Thank right. you so very much, Patricia. And thanks for this wonderful presentation. And now the floor is open for questions and answers. Uh, so participants, if you have any questions, you can type them in the chat. So yeah. So I was okay. looking at the chat and uh, there was uh, this question from Zahra. And she asked that, do you think drama addresses some skills more than others? Um. Sorry, I was reading here. What was the question? I, I thought that the, the, what, what you were reading was the same that was here, but no. Could you repeat, uh, please, uh, Amal? So, yes. So, Zahra asked, do you think drama addresses some skills more than others? Adults? N no, you can use... Others. Uh, others. Uh, yep. Others. Uh, so does drama skills, all, all the four skills, reading, speaking, uh, uh, learning, yes. uh, you know, yeah. Yes, okay. yes. It includes all the four macro abilities. This is great about drama because it is concerned. First of all, remember that communication is oral. We are, we are teaching our students to be able to communicate uh, using English. So they need to develop speaking and listening skills. Today, as English is an international language, listening has become crucial. Mm -hmm. And you know that um, listening is not taught, but is evaluated. This is one of the greatest advantages we are having at the moment because we are still following a traditional model in which listening is left together with the rest. And today, students need exposure. Well, so first, listening and speaking, mm, these are the first two macro abilities that are developed. And then reading, because play reading is also possible in drama. Mm? Um, this is the first step before performing uh, without reading a script. Uh, and then writing. Writing is also um, uh, encouraged, although the activities are not written, but the students need to organize their ideas uh, and they write them down. And in, this way, and in this way, they also increase their writing skills because when they are working together, they also discover mistakes they are doing and they can fix them together. And remember that in this case, the teacher is the last resource. That's why drama is so complete, because it is involved with the four macro abilities. Yes. Any other question? Yes. So the question is, basically asked, how do you motivate students who are shy? Well, that's a very good question. Well, I use drama at all levels, but I started with um, uh, students at uh, Teacher Training College, that is, they trainee teachers. Mm? That was my first experience with drama. And at the beginning, some teacher, some students used to say, "Oh, sorry, Patricia, but I won't be able to participate in the play because you know I, I'm so shy. I, I don't feel comfortable." And, and I always told them, "Okay, my dear, don't worry. You know that you will manage. You will be able to work perfectly well." So when students gradually get involved mm, in the world of drama, their shyness vanishes. It is a matter of time, mm? but you will see that they will get connected gradually. And after the time, uh, they will enjoy what they are doing through drama. So don't worry if at the beginning they say they are shy or you detect that you have shy students. Mm? Try to involve them and they will see how they will enjoy what they do. So this is the idea. Great. So another good question from Amir and Amir asks that, uh, you know, how about the assessment of dramas? So how do you know, how do yes. you take exam? Yeah. Okay, excellent questions. I love them. Well, assessment. I, I have said that the teacher becomes a monitor. So this means that she moves around while the students are organizing the activities. So when the students are working, she is paying close attention to the way they are working. Mm? And uh, in this way, she's doing a formative assessment mm? because she's concentrating on the process. Mm? And remember that every class is a source of information. 
Uh, I don't like written tests because if we pay attention, most of the tests are written. Oral tests are not as common as written ones. And students do not like tests, especially the type of, of, of evaluations we are having at the moment. So if we have the opportunity to have formative assessment, this is the tendency with active methodologies eh? I mentioned at the beginning. Eh? Um, the type of assessment the students need today is formative. This means that uh, the teacher follows the process, not the results. Hmm? Uh, the thing is, remember, I said this at the beginning, we concentrate on procedures that focus on how students learn, not what they learn. The problem is not the content. The problem is how the students learn the contents. Because if we do not pay attention to the how, Mm? The students may fail and we won't be able to detect the problems that uh, they are having. So we need to concentrate on the process. When I discover the weaknesses in the process, not even what's the use of discovering uh, weaknesses on the results? No, we need to pay attention to the weaknesses that may appear on the process because they will be uh, fixed more easily. Mm? So drama provides uh, students with this possibility. That's why drama is so valuable uh, and so powerful. Any other question? Another question was uh, from Haggett and Chiak from any recommendation books to you know dig deeper into the topic. Could you repeat that, please? Yeah, so Haggit asked if you could, uh, you know, recommend any books or other resources if they were interested in this topic of drama into language oh, learning. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, well, I can send you uh, uh, a book. There is one, Sarah Phillips, for example, deals with drama with very little children. Because what is important is to um, uh, introduce drama at an early age mm, so that the students become familiar with it. Mm -hmm. And she proposes different activities in which the students are easily involved. And remember that uh, 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 when children start school um, uh, and they are in the initial level, that's in, that is say in kindergarten, uh, play is the most important activity. Well, ludic and drama games work together because the students are central in the process of learning. Mm -hmm. Um, there is a variety of authors, for example, uh, Pat Baldwin, mm, uh, also, uh, she's on, on Facebook, uh, she's permanently giving uh, webinars mm, and present different types of presentations um, uh, on drama. She has written books about drama. Uh, so that teachers can get information how to start using drama. There is no need to be a specialist. What you need to be is uh, that uh, desire to teach students differently. The idea is that you need to step outside the comfort zone and take challenges. When you uh, take challenges, um, the students tend to imitate you. Mm? And today, stepping uh, outside the comfort zone and think uh, outside the box, uh, both of them are important abilities that should be transmitted to our students. And drama, uh, through the different activities it proposes, well, is responsible for that too. Any other question? Wonderful. So I saw this question uh, from Asensha. Let me. Okay. Ah, uh, here I have one. I can read one if you let me. Sure. Does the inclusion of drama in the language classroom develop communication skills? Well, I think that I have answered this. This is one of the most important uh, functions of drama. Remember that drama is the only alternative method that uh, allows students develop communication skills. And remember that what is important about this is that communication skills 
um, includes not only the development of speaking and listening skills, it also um, helps uh, students develop conversation devices. This is something that, that is not even taught to, um, to native speakers, that is to say, to, when we are learning the mother tongue. For example, when we are having a conversation, there are false starts, repetitions, uh, asking for further information, explanations, reformulation, phrasing, paraphrasing. And the students need to, need to know how to do this, but this is not taught. So drama teaches students how to use conversation devices so as to be able to keep a conversation going. Sometimes students are afraid of taking part in a conversation because they do not feel confident enough and they are afraid of breakdowns in communication. So when they know um, how to use these conversation devices, they will be able to keep a conversation going and they will, be, they will feel confident enough to have a conversation, to be part of an interaction. And this is possible when drama is used. Okay, any other? Yeah, so I was uh, monitoring the chat box, and uh, you know, there was this question from Passage. Uh, let me get it. Yes. So, how to foster the very essence of drama while uh, teaching it in a second language? What are some of the strategies? Well, the strategies, well, for teaching um, English as a foreign or as a second language, the strategies are the same. Hmm? What is the difference? Uh, when you teach English as a second language, the students have the opportunity to uh, finish the, the class and uh, uh, leave, the, 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 leave school, and they have contact with native, uh, with native speakers so that the English language is always around them, so that their ears are sharpened more easily than when we are learning English as a foreign language. For example, in my case, <laughs> in Argentina, <clears throat> English is uh, learned and taught as a, sec as, a, as a foreign language. This means that we do not have the opportunity to, uh, to, um, um, to listen to native speakers if we uh, walk along the streets, hmm? if we go to the supermarket. No, our only possibility is to invite hmm, an English speaking person to our classes once in a while or to listen to recorded material. Today we have the net and we have lots of possi different possibilities, but um, uh, teaching uh, one form or the other, drama strategies are the same. Wonderful, thank you so very much, uh, Patricia. This was a wonderful session. I really appreciate your presence and uh, you know offering all these resources and ideas. So uh, yes, so if you're interested in, uh, for participants, if you're interested in obtaining certificate for this session, you can email at info.tdwebinar.gmail.com while the session was free. Certificates require you to pay some $5 for international audience and 300 rupees for Pakistani audience. So we're available on on our, all our social media channels, you can uh, for future webinars, you can visit uh, Twitter. Our Twitter handle is uh, TD Webinars. We are available on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and this recording will also be available at our Teacher Development Webinars YouTube channel. So for our future webinars, uh, you can always visit our website www.tdwebinars.org and uh, we'll meet you on next Saturday with uh, Dr. Eric Kambele session on English, our English is, it's going to be, you know, interesting then too. So I hope, you know, many of you could join uh, as far as that session too. We are again thankful to Master English Training for sponsoring the Zoom account and thank you, Patricia, for your presence. Thanks very much. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation. For me, it was a great pleasure and I, and I think that um, you should give it a, a try. Uh, remember that when uh, just uh, something personal when i started uh, using drama i never imagined um, the impact it would have on my personal and professional life today i cannot start a class without its magic so i invite you to enter the world of drama and enjoy it in the same way i do thank you very much wonderful so uh, thank you very much for joining us today and uh, take care bye-bye bye-bye